So if you want a surefire way to basically annoy any of the diehard Vim guys, just utter the phrase Vim multi cursor, which basically adds a bunch of virtual cursors into Vim so you can edit multiple places at once. Now, because I want to preempt the comments I'm going to get, I know that every single thing that you can do with multi cursor can be done with vanilla Vim. I also don't care, so feel free to leave your comments. What we're doing is we're working with multi cursor today. If I want to do a video on the vanilla stuff, I'll do a video on the vanilla stuff, but if you're coming from something like Sublime, it is nice that you can actually bring that feature along with you. So let's actually see what the Vim Multi Cursor plugin can actually do. Okay, so over in my Vim buffer, what I've got is an HTML document, and the reason why we're using HTML is because there is a ton of repeated text. So as you can see, I've got a bunch of class attributes, so obviously the word class is repeated, and then all of these class attributes in here, they all have the exact same string. So we have data, 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 data. And then also for the actual tags themselves, we have TD, 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 TD. Or we have T body up here and the T body down the bottom. Or we have T head, T head, table, and table down the bottom as well. So in an HTML document, there is tons and tons of repeated text. And this is the situation where a multi cursor really, really strives. So let's say what we wanted to do was actually go and modify all of these strings in this block here. So all of these four strings in here. So what we can do is if we press control N, what that's going to do is actually go and select that word. And this is going to be the word that we're actually going to be using for matching. Now, you don't necessarily have to just use multi cursor on a word by word basis. You can do it in another way, but I'll show you that in just a bit. For now, we're just going to be working with it as a word. So if I press control N again, what that's going to do is make a second cursor. So as you can see, we now actually have the cursor on two lines. Let's make another one and another one. Now we can actually go and move this group around. So let's say we wanted to instead modify in the other direction. That will work like this. Or we could actually move this across lines as well. But once you start moving across lines, it gets really, really easy to actually break the order the cursors are actually in. This isn't a problem with this plugin. It's just sort of a problem with having your cursor in four different locations at once. So if I go and actually move this to a different line, bad things are going to start happening. So I'm not going to be doing that for now. I might show you that a bit later though. So what we can do from here is just all of the normal stuff we would do in normal mode. So let's say what we wanted to do was change this. So we can go and change this over to something like better underscore class. As you can see, all of those are being edited at once. Now you might be wondering, well, okay, how do I get back into regular Vim mode? All we have to do is go back into, I guess, normal multi cursor mode. So just press escape and that takes you back into normal multi cursor mode and then just press escape again and that will take you back to actual normal mode. Okay, so that seems pretty useful then, but let's try something different. So if we press control N to start up multi cursor mode again, let's say we didn't actually want to modify this one right here. So what we can do is press control N and that will make a multi cursor in that spot. And then if we press control X, what it's gonna do is move this multi cursor onto the next spot. So control X, as you can see, we still have two multi cursors now, but it's not actually matching on this second bit in here. And then we can go and actually make another one by pressing control N. So what if we wanted to go in the other direction? If we press control P, that's basically gonna do that. So control P will actually get rid of one of the cursors and if we press control P again, that will take us back to one cursor and control P again, that will take us back into normal mode. Now, if we have tons and tons of repeated text like this, it might be really annoying to go and actually change every single one individually. Wouldn't it be easier to just go and make a multi cursor for everything that says data on it? So instead of doing control N, what we can do is just do alt N and that will automatically go and match on every single instance of that in the entire document. Now, be careful because you might actually be using that string in some other location. So make sure that you actually know what you're actually matching on before you go and do this. But we can just do the same stuff we saw earlier. So we have 20 curses this time if we just do change. Now, as we have 20 curses, it's going to start getting a little bit slow, but let's change this one to new underscore class. And as we can see, all of them are being modified at once. We can go back into regular normal mode. 
as you can see, all of them have been modified. So this is the sort of stuff that multi-cursor can actually do. Now there is one thing I did neglect to mention, that is how the word matching is actually done. So when you press Control N, that is basically word matching with acknowledgement of the word boundary. So what I mean by this is let's say we add the letters TH up here and we go and match on this. Now, if we weren't acknowledging word boundaries, what would happen is as we go and make another cursor, it would actually go and select the TH part of the T head here. So if we go and make this now, as you can see, it actually goes and ignores that. But let's say we didn't want to ignore that and we actually did want to go and match on that as well. So if we press G control N, that doesn't really change anything. But if we do it again, so G control N, as you can see, this time it actually does go and match on the TH part of T head. So by default, it acknowledges word boundaries, but if you need to ignore the word boundaries for whatever reason, just do G control N. And the same is gonna be true for doing all of the matches in one command. So if we do G alt N, as you can see, this actually includes the TH part of T head as well as all of the TH elements. So let's go through what might be, I guess, a bit more of a practical multi-cursor example. So normally when you're using multi-cursor or just when you're using Vim in general, you're not just gonna be using the Vim keys to move around. You're probably gonna be using things like the F key so you can actually jump somewhere on a line. So if we do F capital A, that jumps to the next capital A on the line. Or if we do something like slash and search for class, that'll jump to class. So normally this is how you're gonna be using Vim. So now that we've jumped to class, let's actually say we wanted to go and select all of the class. So if we do Alt N, that goes and creates 31 cursors and then we can go and modify this. So let's say we just wanna change this to just be class, but starting with a capital or something. Now, obviously, I guess HTML does interpret that as a proper attribute. I didn't realize it did that. That's kind of nice. Anyway, I didn't think that would actually interpret that as a proper attribute, but as you can see, we've gone and actually changed that now. So what about a bit of a different example then? So let's move outside of the HTML context because you might be thinking at this point, well, does this really serve much of a purpose if I'm not actually gonna be working with an HTML document? And yes, it does, but you might have to work with it in, I guess, a slightly different way. So what I mean by this is in other formats besides HTML, you will still have a lot of repeated elements, but it might not be repeated words. It's more likely to be things like repeated syntax. So things like commas, or brackets or braces, things like this. So you have to work with it in a slightly different way. So what I've got here is basically an array that you'd see in languages like JavaScript or Python. And what we're gonna do is basically delete all of the array structure and make it so the only thing left over is the words and the words being on separate lines. So the first thing we're going to wanna do is actually delete up to this bracket here. Now there are different ways you can go about doing this, but this is the way that I'm going to do it. So if we do D for a delete, F for a find, and then find the first open square bracket, that would delete up to that point. And let's go to the end of the line now. So press dollar sign and replace this with a comma. Now you'll see why we're replacing this with a comma in just a moment. Let's go back to the start and go up to this first comma here. So what we're gonna do now is we can't just do control N to make a cursor because that's gonna go and select some extra stuff we don't really wanna select. What we're gonna do instead is actually enter visual mode and select this in visual mode and then press control N. So if we press control N now, what this is gonna do is use the thing we've got selected in visual mode as the thing to match on. So control N, that actually goes and selects the next comma and control N again. And now we've selected all of the commas. So what we're gonna do now is basically change these and replace them with basically carriage returns. As you can see now, all of the words are on their own separate lines, but we still have these quotation marks to get rid of. So what we can do here is just move up a little bit, delete the quotation marks. I forgot that I'm still in insert mode, so we have to do that with the delete and go to the end of the line and delete these here. As you can see, all of the words are on their own separate lines and also all of the array structure is deleted. So this is the sort of stuff that you can do with Vim Multicursor. But it's not the only thing. So let's move back to the HTML example and see what else we can actually do. Now, what we're gonna do here is basically go and select what we want the cursors to be on based on a regex. So let's say we wanna select all of these TD elements in here. So if we go into command mode 
and run the command multiple cursors find and then supply it with a regex, that's actually going to do that. So I've already written the regex down earlier because I'm terrible at regex and if I try to do it on camera, it will go very poorly. So right angle bracket backslash ZS dot star and then backslash ZE and then left angle bracket. So what this is going to do is just select the text that is within these actual angle brackets here. So we run this now, as you can see, it just selects that text. So we can go and modify all of these, or we could just go and delete the text. So if I just press X here, that goes and deletes that. So this should give you a pretty good idea about what you can actually do with the multi-cursor. This is by no means the extent of what it can do, but this is the bare fundamentals for what you need to know to actually go and do some of the really cool stuff. Now, once again, I already know that all of this stuff can be done in Vanilla Vim, but this channel isn't about the best way to do something or the most productive way to do something. It's about cool ways that you can do stuff if you really want to. So if you are coming from something like Sublime Text or any of the other text editors that have copied the multiple cursors, trying this out when you're using Vim might make your workflow a little bit better. Now, I'm not going to be using it myself. I've actually had it installed for quite a while and I never really got around to properly using it. I'm probably going to uninstall it just because I don't really think that it's that useful for me. But if you are already used to working with multiple cursors, this might be a really good addition to your Vim installation. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I want to thank my patrons. So a special thank you to Joachim Craig, Nathan, Andrew, Montezar, Peter D. Road, Tony, Chris, Donald, and Zilva. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links. We can buy the gear using this channel or anything else you want, and I'll get a small kickback for it. Also, we go check out my podcast. That is Tech of a T available on Library and YouTube, and the audio version available wherever you listen to audio podcasts. Also, we go check out this channel available on Library, BitTube, and BitChute. And remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. And remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. And I'm out.